This episode is brought to you by two of our latest patrons, Derek Derrickson, which I do not believe is your real name, <laughs> sir, uh, and Ali Crawford. So thanks for being awesome, guys. Uh, and yeah, we appreciate your support. This is Christopher Walken, here to warn you that this contains some explicitly foul language. And if you don't like that, then I'll put my foot in your throat. The soundtrack's amazing. Yeah. The visuals are very, like, well done. And, like, the gameplay is super <laughs> fun. And, like, because those three things are there, it's, like, it's exceptionally good. Hey, I could do it in a heartbeat and make millions, but it would feel like gouging my soul out. Yeah. Jurassic Park's a little more like DDR. If Shrek is a very tough creature, can he actually own land and want to kick them off? Like, where did that come from? You have to make a lot of shit up to make good art. Yeah, yeah. That's, like, that's just the truth, buddy. Okay, guys, welcome back to uh, another episode of AFA, our For Artists podcast. I'm David. Um, Lee. I always forget, like, what's a good way <laughs> I'm to... I'm David just, something, I'm just something, the guy. something. It's, I'm here. We're always here. Yeah. Yeah. And it's me again, Ben. Mm. And our new microphones, um, which is nice. Mm. They're very, um, they're they're very, very shiny and black. They're very it's, close. It's, Close. Yeah, I'm gonna close get closer. To this. This is gonna, we'll, this if you is would stop touching like it, yeah. So I'm just gonna do this. I'll just mute Ben horrible. for Ben. Right. Is just gonna. What are you? Do, what, I'm, I'm getting. I'm getting. All right. It's when you just lean into it. <laughs> no, because I don't want to. I just oh, okay. want to sit here That's and fine. be lazy. I can't see your mouth, which is hilarious because <laughs> it's like I don't know what you're saying. You could be frowning at me. I'd you know, can't. I'd you know can't it. read my lips. No, not that I need to. I'm not blind. You, you're not blind. I'm not blind. So you, if you were blind, you wouldn't be able to read lips in the first place. You're not deaf. You're an idiot. <laughs> yeah, good start. Um, so today we wanted to talk about um, whether or not hype is good or bad. Because like bad. a lot of stuff... Oh, wow. <laughs> All right. Uh, Episode over. <laughs> I, I've been David. Uh, it's been Ben. We'll see you guys next time. Yep. Um, so, I mean, because there's a lot of stuff coming out in the next sort of... Well, I mean, always stuff is coming out and people are excited yeah. for it. Um, but there's big stuff coming there's out. There's big stuff and there's a few things that we want to talk about. And then there's something else that I want to talk about. Um, but we'll start with kind of... What we mean by talking about hype. So hype is like generally any time that like, there's an announcement or something's coming up. And people get a little too excited yeah. to the point where like they become a little fanatical. There's a reason why like Rewind Theater on IGN exists. And it's all just because of hype. Oh, like, yeah. Like when, when you're frame by frame like That's how you know pulling you've got apart a trailers, I'm, which aren't even representative of the final product I usually. I, I'm, I put, I'm not sitting. I'm leaning. Hang on. I want to lean back. We're gonna mute mute David while that's he does right. all this. It's shit. a little spin. That's fine. That's good. <laughs> um, but yeah, so yeah, it's just basically any time that someone gets a little too excited for something. Yeah. Um, whether or not they should get excited for it is irrelevant. It's more about like the way that people deal with their excitement. Yeah. So... Uh, and the violent uh, <laughs> things that occur afterwards. So like aggressive defense. Um, they get a little too excited and they just talk about it. It's the like, only thing they talk about. There's like yeah, there's like some instances where it's just they you know people just like talk about it. As if it's already out. So oh, probably... they, they're like, it's the best thing ever. And yeah, you're like, it's, you're not, like, it's not even out yet. yet. <laughs> yeah. Um, so a good example is, well, I mean, there's a few. There's but a few. I want to think talk of about, a couple. Yeah. I want to talk about Fallout because um, back when Skyrim first came out, Skyrim had the same problem that Fallout 4 is going to have. But I think they, they've done a good job of mediating the amount of hype for Fallout 4 by releasing it soon after they announced it. Yeah. Like, it's only, like, six weeks away or something. It's not and also, they, like, the, the announcement itself was, like, it was, like, Fallout plus, like, f- like three other things that were, like, amazing. Like, Fallout Shelter literally coming out that day. And yeah. then, like... And Dishonored 2 and a few other things. Yeah. And... Yeah, they didn't just do what they did with Skyrim, where, like... Skyrim! Admittedly, that was one of the coolest announcements ever, because they got Todd Howard up. They got all these people up on stage in cloaks. <laughs> and then they start... And then Todd Howard threw his thing, and it was like, oh, fuck. That's so That's nerdy. The... It was so <laughs> nerdy, but it was also like, oh, that was cool that they can do that. Like, they have that presence to be able to do that. Yeah. Kind of thing. But there was a big problem with hype with Skyrim, where, like... The, like Bethesda ended up being like, guys, you need to come, which sounds so counterintuitive because from a marketing perspective, you want people to be excited for it. Yeah. But they had to be like, guys, you need to come. Like, it's not, you can't, it's no one's going to, you're not going to enjoy it if you think it's going to be the best thing ever. Yeah. Probably the, the distance between the announcement and when it came out probably like didn't help that. Yeah. Whereas Fallout, it's like, when is it? It's like two months? No, it's, it's, it's out in like a few weeks. Wait, what? Like, it's November. Oh, Jesus. It's the start of November. Fuck, it's September right now. <laughs> yeah, so, like, they... S- September, October, November. We're in the so middle it's, like, of, a month. It's not that far away. We're in the middle of September. So it's, like, a month and a half. So, like, it... 
Which is insane to think about because, like, to me, it's like it's coming out next year, but well, it's not. What's crazy is that I think it's because Bethesda have a history of doing that, where they're like, "That's we got a game that's coming out." You think it's gonna get delayed? It's gonna be uh no, 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 because it's Bethesda. They they don't they don't name a they... project they've delayed. Yeah, good point. Yeah, Todd. Okay, so here's the this thing. isn't Blizzard. Todd Howard wouldn't be like. There is no way that Todd Howard, being the kind of CEO he is, would be like, hey guys, let's announce this if we're not completely done with it. Yeah. So when they announced Skyrim, they've talked about this before, when they announced Skyrim, the game was finished, and then they spent the year polishing polishing and fixing and making it work better and adding stuff. But the game itself, like the engine, the story, all of the They had like a version they would would like, we'd be fine. They would would publish it, yeah. Yeah. So I think that's that's always been their philosophy, is like, we want to, if we're going to announce something that's this important to people, we're going to make sure that it's done before we announce it. I mean, it. Fallout 4 looks pretty done. Yeah. Well, I mean, how, I was just... <laughs> sorry, I was... That pause was, like, was me. That <laughs> wasn't me having a stroke. I was thinking about it. Um, yeah. Yeah. All the gameplay we've seen is super polished. Um, I think what's a good sign is that in some of the gameplay, there's a few little janky bits and pieces. Well, I mean, the whole game. Like, it's a Which, Bethesda no, game. Because to, well, to me, that's a good thing because it means that the gameplay that they're showing is actually it's in-game. Actual, yeah, it's actually in-game. So, like, you look like, at... There's a um, there's a piece of gameplay footage where a character gets into the uh, the what are the mech suits called the power armor power armor like well, someone someone just had a honey when I called them a mech suit <laughs> mech like suit. how dare you you've crossed the line I don't I made them into a villain um, yeah like a like a eighties movie villain like um, the Riddler yeah um, or like something you see in a James Bond film oh god yeah. um, I don't know why so I apologize for whoever got angry <laughs> um, but yeah so uh, there's a piece of footage where the character gets into that suit of armor. Um, and the game crashes. <laughs> well, <laughs> fucking was, crashes. One of the, the first. Desktop. One of the first ones was that they did an, They did a live demo for IGN, yeah. and the game crashed, which oh, I think is a good yeah, sign. That's, um, yeah. Well, I mean, when a game is crashing, becomes a good sign. That's a sort. That's a weird thing. I think that means that there's a lot of like. I think that speaks to a huge level of mistrust that we have for game developers. Yeah. We'll put, out, we'll put out a trailer that doesn't contain any actual game footage. Yeah, we're just like, where's where's the game breaking bugs? Where is the yeah. where's the tr- yeah. where's the lack of polish? Or, or where's the slight graphical jank? Yeah, like even in The Witcher Three. So I'm still playing The Witcher Three. I've got like 80 hours. I'm just slogging through it. Like it's such <laughs> a fucking hassle. It's a great game, but I haven't played God, any of The Witches. It's so it's kind of like it feels like homework now to try and finish it. <laughs> I'm still enjoying it, but every time I get to the game, I'm like, oh, here we go. I I feel like I want to read the books before I play the games. Uh, nah, or at least uh, the first. Anthology. You should you should read up to where the third game starts and then just play the third game. Oh, okay. You've not missed the first. The first game is really it doesn't age well. Yeah. The second game aged well, but is so short. And weird it's weird they tried to do open world but they did it in like stages yeah. so there's like three open world areas and it just feels really like it feels like th- three separate games yeah and there's no th- this thematic like it's just it's one story but it's just so weirdly paced because it's three areas like it just it's weird yeah okay you can skip the second one. third okay. one <laughs> highly recommend but you have to really commit no uh. Like, it's, I've got 80 hours, and I've done nearly, I've done, like, not intentionally, I've done most of the side quests, and I've, yeah. I'm, like, I'm, like, up to the big final battle. Yeah. And I'm gonna play the DLC, Like, I think. This, to me, 80 hours is, like, something that, like, I don't, I don't spend 80 hours in a single-player game. See, I've like, got... Like, that's just, that just feels weird. I've got, like, 400 hours in Skyrim. So well, that's like different, because Skyrim is, like, a world. Well, I'm... Like, well, a game with just a story Oh, well, The Witcher 3 a... is an entire world. It's completely open world. Oh, okay. It's, it's, it's the equivalent <laughs> of Skyrim, but with The Witcher. Oh, okay. So, like, there's three different... There's, like... Or there's... There's there's one big mainland, and then there's, a con- there's like, an island you can go to. Yeah. The island's about as big as the mainland. And, like, it would take you probably, like, three hours to go from the top of the map to the bottom, riding full, full pelt and horse. And it's super... Like, it's a really big world. Yeah. Um, and then the DLC is coming out. The DLC is, like, going to put you in... Um, from what I gather, it's going to put you in, like, a... Um, like a slightly, you know how in Game of Thrones, I don't know, do you watch Game of Thrones? No, I don't watch. Well, there's like, okay, there's like, there's, <laughs> like this, TV. there's like the Spanish Isles or whatever. Kind of. Like, they're like the Spanish place or whatever. Yeah. Really similar. So like the DLC takes place there. So it's completely different culturally. Yeah. And the world looks totally different over there because it's like summery and there's sand and shit. Whereas like the Witcher 3's main it's, game. It's like autumn always. Well, no, you're in like, you're in like the, you're in like the north of the world. So there's like lots of Swedish people yeah. and like Knoll folk. <laughs> Like it's really North Skyrim. Folk, yeah. It's very Skyrimy, but like that Um I'm trying to think of how it was tying it to fall. Oh yeah. So I played a lot of hours in that. Um, but I didn't necessarily majorly enjoy it. But I think that's because I had low expectations going in. 
Yeah. Like, I had seen a trailer and I was like, oh, this looks like a good RPG. But I wasn't like, oh, this is going to be the best thing that's ever <laughs> come out ever. Yeah. But I feel like with Fallout 4, they've somehow avoided the problem they had with Skyrim where people were so... Ex- like, I remember the f- there was a Harry Partridge cartoon he did. Oh, God. He did, like, three of those. Yeah. And, but yeah. the first one he did was so, like, was just the epitome of, like, everyone that was <laughs> Yeah, excited. and it was, like, a year before the, came, the game came yeah, out Yeah, because it was well. when the first trailer came yeah. out. Um, and it was like, oh, you get too excited about game trailers. And then he does a song where he's getting excited about a game trailer. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, that is the problem, is yeah. that people get too excited. So he, he did a good job of that. But Well, because, like, the first Fallout trailer was had a lot of gameplay in it. Like, it wasn't just, like, a teaser. Like, the announcement for Fallout 4, like... It was actually a game. It game-play. was actually a game. No, it, it wasn't even that. It was the game... The, the announcement was, it was in two parts. So they had the, the announcement trailer was like more cinematic and then it ended yeah. and then they actually had a gameplay demo on the stage straight like literally straight afterwards yeah. there was no pause todd like oh uh, there lines. was that uh there was that live stream of the announcement trailer first which was uh, about, okay it was which oh that was, was about a week that was before the it was, it was a, yeah, it was like yeah a few weeks before but they followed E3. it up directly with that yeah. e3 where they had the gameplay footage yeah, on like stage. it was a very short period of but time. even the announcement trailer you're right had gameplay footage um uh yeah it did it would like it was you what, could it was you could tr- see the Skyrim run animations of some of the characters. Yeah, that was really. See, I was like, "What the fuck, it's Skyrim?" <laughs> you could see there was a few moments. Um, I think a particularly one thing that was like that made me hesitant initially was um, in that gameplay demo where you're in the world before the bombs have hit. Yeah. And there's the character that comes to the front door and he's wearing like a suit and an overcoat. Yeah. And you could the obviously Vol-Tec see there guy. were no bump maps and they were all the same oh, piece really? of cloth. And I was like, <laughs> I was like uh, that's such a that's like funny. they've clearly built the bump maps and they built all the cloth physics, but not in this demo. So they just like threw it all together. Like so they something were, that yeah. works. So they were like, I oh, will just make it one so yeah. for this <laughs> So hopefully when the game cuz that's one thing Fallout, that's one thing Skyrim needed was really good cloth physics on character models that it didn't yeah, have. Yeah, cuz most of it was cloth. Yeah. So, like, a great example in The Witcher 3 is that everything has great cloth physics. They spent so long making it all work. Yeah. And it's really satisfying because it means that, like, you never get drawn... Like, one of the biggest problems with Skyrim is that it's really easy to get drawn out of the world if you see someone running and their cloak sticks to their ankles. <laughs> like, you just get totally drawn out of the world. Yeah. You're which like, is that's dumb. Which you don't want in a game that's supposed to immerse you. Yeah. So, if they can get that right, I think that'll be a vast improvement yeah. of a Skyrim. But I think they somehow avoided making people too excited. Because I haven't seen the kind of attitude that we saw with Skyrim, where it was just this, like, continual build-up of malicious excitement. Well, I think, like, because Fallout in general has always just been, like, the games are the games are good. Like, Fallout games are really good. It's just two of but, them. Like, like, there's just two yeah. that people consider to be the Fallout games. Yeah, but, like, no one really, yeah, no one really cares. But, like, at the same time, because it's a Bethesda game, it still has... It has so, like, Bethesda games have, like, a baseline level of hype. <laughs> yeah. So because there's always... Because they're, they're, they're so... They're infrequent and they're amazing. And then it's just, like, you get you get added hype based on, like, what it's a sequel of. Because that's all Bethesda does, is sequels. Because, I mean, until, like, literally everything they're doing is sequel. Oh, arguably, doing... arguably, they make the same game. Yeah. Well, they're doing their, uh... The, uh, Elder Scrolls, like, Hearthstone clone... What? It got announced at E3? Uh, I remember or you mentioning after? this, but I yeah. don't think I was particularly... No, no one knows about it. It, 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 it <laughs> just went straight off my head. It's, it's basically, a, like, they looked at Hearthstone. They're like, oh, we can do that with Elder Scrolls. So oh. they're doing the same thing. That's a thing. But, like, yeah, so there's, like, baseline level of hype with everything. And then just, like, depending on what it is, there's, like, more hype built on that. And, like, because Fallout's, like, the only... Like, most people just consider Fallout 3 and New Vegas to be, like, the mainline mm. current Fallout game. Well, they're, they're the... They're, they're the Bethesda the, ones. Yeah. And they're, like, the original, like, five They're, like, a different games. series. They're, like, yeah, they're completely different. But, like, so, because there's, like, not that many games, and, like, they do okay. Mm. And, like, yeah, they're good, but most people don't really consider them, like, super hype-worthy. Well, like, it's not, like, because, like, Oblivion was insane. Like, Oblivion was, like... It was a game-changer, to Yeah, be like, Oblivion was, it was, like, what, Xbox 360, like, it was it was early. It was kind of the first game after GTA 3 to do <clears throat> open world well. Yeah, and like it looked amazing, and it like ran surprisingly well on PCs. I think while still looking amazing. I think the reason that Elder Scrolls garners more hype is that it's the tone of the series. Yeah, for like, that's... like if you think about if you think about Oblivion, there's something so fucking enticing yeah. about a fantasy world made like that. Yeah, and it was even though the same... it's just like it's just like another fantasy world, but like it's generic fantasy. But they, they there's sort something of... about the tone that yeah. they get right. Whereas with Fallout, it's good fun and it's like yeah i really like it's like the wasteland is fun you know i'm excited for the next one but it just is something about skyrim you think about oblivion like oblivion oblivion has all those like quirks 
that like that engine had like yep. how characters stare into your soul oh, when they talk to you <laughs> the zoom in thing and, the... yeah and just like the jet and like how everything's like super bloom like the environment is like fucking yeah. bloom to the max oh absolutely and then you think about and like fallout 3 was like pretty similar engine at least graphical wise and it like npc wise it so was like, it was pretty similar yeah it was pretty much the same engine it was only like three or four years off yeah it wasn't that long after but like you think about that game it's like you don't really associate the same sort of quirks it's with fallout, I, 3. fallout 3 is just like it's this like it's this f- like wasteland game it's a fun ga- the thing is like when i think about them in my head it's like <laughs> fallout i think of fallout as being a fun game yeah whereas i think of skyrim as being like this experience that i had well, because I played, right? I, I played more Fallout than Skyrim. Mm. Like I have, like all this, I have most of the Elder Scrolls games, but like I haven't put nearly as many hours into them as I have the Fallout mm. games. That's interesting. To me. Like Fallout New Vegas, I finished twice. That might be because of your tendency to walk first-person shooters, though. Yeah, it would be actually. <laughs> like the, like... The, the the mods I have on New Vegas are like, like no accuracy penalty for a low perception on f- weapons, and like headshots actually kill people in one you hit should, like i run those mods all the time you should um if you if you attempted to play it again before fallout 4 i don't know how much time you have but if you're gonna do that you should get um eve plasma weapons eve plasma weapons yeah. and it changes all the sound effects and changes the physical makeup of the plasma weapons a tiny bit but it makes there's something about the way that they do it <clears throat> they take them from being these weird like just ray cast floaty yeah. ray things to feeling like they're mechanically constructed plasma like they feel more realistic like all of the plasma and laser weapons feel like they could be real yeah i feel like the biggest problem in new vegas particularly is that because the tone was very wild westy some of the plasma weapons and laser weapons felt a little weird yeah they just they're so out of place and like yeah. no like there's a lot of like sort of i don't know like unique weapons like benny's pistol yeah and like all those things that but feel like so cool in that setting but they're like there there aren't any just like sort of super sci-fi unique weapons in new vegas yeah, which is weird there are a few in fallout 3 especially with the uh like the alien there were, there were tons and then they're in the, some of the dlc like fallout 3 was a lot more super sci-fi, sci-fi whereas new vegas was a bit more like ragtag i think that's basically just, vegas i think that's obsidian's style to be honest yeah if you look at this kind of storytelling they like to do that seems more them yeah like it's much more low-key and that that idea of like there's something really enticing i would argue that the dlc for new vegas is better than the game itself have you played the dlc uh no, a, not the new four. vegas dlc oh I've played the fallout 3 deal. I haven't oh played new vegas my DLC. god they are okay so <laughs> i was i was telling um i was talking to someone about this the other day i would argue that the dlc for that is better than so that there's there's four pieces yeah um the dlc for those games tell a better story than the whole of new vegas they're, they're sequential so they, they they're in different areas and they tell different yeah. stories but they follow one character you're basically tracking a character yeah um and they tell what I would consider to be probably one of the best stories that has been told in like that Bethesda framework. Yeah. Um, as much as I like Skyrim, the main story was a bit nothing, right? I didn't even finish the main story of Skyrim. Like I, I've, I've never finished an uh, Elder Scrolls game. Like I, I guess, played the shit out. I of them. guess you could argue I just that walk around. The and... main story is whatever you make it, right? Like, yeah. It's... Well, no, not with Skyrim. Yeah. Because but... the main story is you're the dragonborn, kill a bunch of dragons. Like, kind of. Well, the no, the main even the, story. Even Oblivion is the same. You're yeah, you're just not a dragonborn. You still kill a bunch of dragons, though. You're, you're just like the savior of. Yeah. The, yeah. But I guess that's like that's the thing with that world. Right? And like, it's not like New Vegas or Fallout Three Escape that you. There is a distinct storyline in those games. I just sort of enjoyed it, especially yeah, New Vegas. New Vegas is oh, so just. You like, need to play. You have to follow. You need it. to play the DLC because oh. they are. So, there's one. Okay. So because I, I have the. I, I have could, the like ultimate edition for fallout you, 3 but not new uh, vegas because i bought new vegas at retail you gotta you gotta like 20 gotta, bucks <laughs> oh, i think the ultimate edition on steam is 20 bucks oh right i'd have to get it yeah right. no you should um the the dlc are <coughs> fucking phenomenal yeah. so there's one where you go to a moon base but oh, it's like yeah I've, yeah I've heard about it's the... like infested by lobotomized people and yeah. it's really creepy and then <laughs> there's one my favorite one well my favorite one aside from the conclusion um <clears throat> is there's a really there's one that's really average which is the one where you go to the grand canyon yeah that one's okay <laughs> they kind of they kind of try they try a little too hard for like the indigenous versus the cowboys thing uh, like they just tried a little too hard yeah fun um yeah but then there's my one of my favorite pieces of any content that i've played in any game is um dead money which is where you go to this abandoned casino um that was said to have like 
the biggest prize in the world in it. Yeah. And you go there to try and recover it, but the whole place has been like poisoned with this gas. Yeah. Um, and you're captured by someone and you're forced to go and seek out this treasure and you do this massive heist to get this treasure. <laughs> and you've got like a bomb collar on. It's oh, so God, cool. That's it's crazy. so cool. So it's like ratchet deadlocked. Oh, yes. Ratchet gladiator absolutely. Yeah. It's fucking... uh, and then the final one, you follow this person that you've been tracking because the whole point of all the DLC is you're following this character yeah. in his footsteps. Uh, and you finally catch up with him. And it's... The the map of that DLC is a linear... It's relatively linear. Well, it's not really linear. It's I should say it's a line. Yeah. Of you following in its footsteps through, like, this completely desiccated, like, just fucked up city. <laughs> like, like in your head, if you think about, like, oh, like, what would New York look like if you bombed it? That's what you're going through. Yeah. And you go through the city, and you reach him, and then you have this massive, like, showdown. <laughs> and it's amazing. Probably, actually, um, probably the, the weirdest, the weirdest storyline, because I only started playing Fallout 3 a while ago. And the friggin' there's like the the goddamn like the brothel sort of <coughs> area, uh, but it's just the one guy. <laughs> the so it's not really a brothel. It's more just like there's this mansion, this random ass house. Yeah. And it's run by this guy, <laughs> and he has like these two like woman slaves who oh, are okay. like always. Oh, it's a cat. Who are always <laughs> staring oh, at me. Oh, the cat. Yeah, <laughs> he just wants to hang out. Who are, like these two like female characters who are wearing like. What is it like? Fucking goddamn like sleeping sleepwear. Like, oh, the sexy know. sleepwear yeah. item. Yeah. The the, the sleeper item from goddamn Fallout Shelter, like that shit. Yeah. And it's like, I just like the the moment I got in there, I'm just like, okay, so like clearly this guy is being like portrayed as being evil because he's like got these random yeah. like sex slaves. Got these wenches. Yeah. So I'm like, know. okay, like, like let's see what happens. And like he like you walk in, he's just like, how'd you get in here? Like whatever. And it's like. There's the quest line where you have to, where you like, you escape with one of the, like, f- with one of the females and you take her to the city, mm-hmm. like, in the boat. And it's like, the, at like the very end, there's like this weird confrontation where, like, where the guy is just like, oh, you're running away with my girl. And I'm like, yep. And he's just like, I can't let you do that. So I killed the guy. Yeah. But then, like, the girl I was taking, she, like, gets scared because I killed him. Yeah. And she runs off in the corner and refuse. And I'm like, what the fuck? It's very full. Like, yeah. Like, what the? <laughs> That's I'm such like, a Bethesda moment. Yeah. Like, I'm like, I'm like, like I, I thought this him. was part of the game. God, why didn't someone fix that? Yeah. I'm like, why? Like, this is part of the quest, isn't it? Uh, I kill him because he's like, you're running away with my girl. I'm like, yeah. And he pulls a gun out of me and starts shooting me. So I kill him. Like, what am I supposed to do? I'm like, like what? To keep my gun. Oh, it's just so weird. That's so funny. It's like, that's so just like hashtag Bethesda. Just like yeah. that's exactly what they do. I mean, it's, that's yeah, that really is. <laughs> I feel like that's one of those things where like, like I don't know if I did the quest wrong, you but get like that anywhere else. I thought I read it pretty. I think it's properly. just the vol. I think it's one of those things where just, just the so volume vol- of content yeah. they have. There's no way that they can fix everything. No, and but like, like that's kind of the charm of the games, to be honest. Like they're a little bit and like because they're so because the way they're made, it makes them so easy to mod. Yes, which is good for the modding community. Well, they also support the shit out of it. Yeah. So it's like, like they want that. Like a, a problem like that wouldn't a, wouldn't arise in a, a game that's sort of like a lot more like structurally, or less structurally actually like made. Like something that's just sort of like everything connects with everything else. Mm. Like everything has like really yeah. deep ties with everything everything else in the code, which means that if someone wants to go in and like add something, it's they hard. have to like change everything. You've you've to got to change it. dependencies and stuff. Yeah. I suppose the advantage of what they do is that someone can go in and fix that quest bug. Yeah. And that's, I mean, they do that, and then they add that into patch notes and stuff. Kitty Cat is checking me out. Does he want to jump up on you? I don't know. We'll see. That's, that, could, that could end badly. No, he doesn't want to see what happens. <laughs> he's like, fuck that, he smells funny. Oh, God. No, he's going under the table. Oh. All right. Hey, he's cat. just chilling out. Yeah, my cat's been an inquisitive kind of guy. He mm. doesn't quite understand what microphones are yet. <laughs> um, it's like, why are you guys talking? <coughs> yeah. In what are you, what are you doing? Black boxes. I don't think he knows. I don't think he cares. No. He's just smell on the floor. <laughs> Fucking weirdo. All right, see you, cat. Fuck, bye. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I guess like somehow they avoided that hype train. I don't know if I don't know if it's because I. There's still a, there's still a hype train. I feel it's like just, I just keep it, to, maybe there I keep are just the, breaks on it this time. Yeah, there's big breaks. I feel like yeah. maybe it's because like I don't I don't like indulge myself in reading anything on the internet that people write anymore. Yeah. I only ever read audit because I just don't have time to feel shitty about everything. For me, like, how, how I get most of my media is just through YouTube. I just follow people. Yeah, that... I, get, I get YouTube or I, or I have yeah. people on Twitter that will retweet particular yeah. news stories that I would have interest in. Yeah. But, like, I don't... 
I don't seek out forums. I don't use like no. Reddit or anything. So I don't expose myself to like that kind. Like I don't expose myself to conversations that are yeah. gonna make me feel shitty. Well, funny, you know. Reddit's funny. So because <laughs> I I sort of follow I follow Reddit sort of just for like the smaller subreddits of like individual stuff. Specific stuff you're interested yeah. in. Yeah. Because like Reddit itself is pretty gross. Um, well, isn't that? I mean, that could be said of any large online community. Yeah, pretty much. You know. But the pr- probably the funniest example of like just hype gone just to just stupid levels is the the community surrounding Overwatch, which is Blizzard's take on TF2 essentially. So it's Blizzard's like first first person shooter. It's like Blizzard like they they started off making RTS games. Yeah. Well, they no, started off making a racing game. Then they made RTS oh, games. I never forgot about that one. <laughs> yeah. Like Hot Rod r- oh, Racing yeah. or something. Yeah, or like fucking Oh my god, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then... Fuck, they actually did that, didn't yeah. they? Yeah. they crazy. did. Then they had Warcraft. Yep. And Starcraft, which are essentially the same game. Then they did WoW, which was their MMO. Yep. And then they did more Starcraft. And then they had Diablo, obviously. And the like their RPG. Wow. So they had, they had RPG, RTS, MMO, and then they're like... They made a card game. <laughs> and now it's like... It turned out to be weird. amazing. Yeah. Now they're like, we're going to make a first-person shooter. Well, they made a MOBA as well, but it's bad. So well, they're making... We talk about that. So they're making a first-person shooter. And it's like... The hype train for that game has been going for so long because they announced it, like, last year. Yeah. And <clears throat> it's like... We saw the... Like, the first trailers came out and it's just like... It's basically TF2. Which is, like, this weird... Because, like, TF2 is, like kind of one of a kind at the moment like there aren't many games where it's sort of just like this class based team but there's a lot trying to emulate it yeah but like none of them do it well yeah so like Dirty Bomb's probably one of the most recent examples and it's I mean everyone's had a crack at yeah. it like there was a Batman game that did it as well oh yeah Gotham City like there's just yeah. like everyone's tried to do it but like this is like the first like big studio that's doing it so mm. everyone's like alright this, this should be good so it's Blizzard so like but the, the subreddit for for Overwatch is like the biggest just like not even really circle jerky just like super cringy like every second day there's a thread about like people who are like oh what character are you gonna main in Overwatch uh, and it's yeah. like the game isn't even out yet Lit- like there are like to be honest there are a lot of like gameplay videos for Overwatch yeah. like pretty much every character has like a like a 20 minute mm. gameplay sequence yeah. of them playing but it's like you can't just like t- look at a video and base just like oh I'm gonna play this all and there there are people who are like making tier lists for a game that isn't even out yet and it's like it's just so annoying because the and like there are there are some threads where it's just like can we stop talking about this shit that we like can we just stop talking about like stuff that we have no idea the answer about. is no we can't we're too excited <laughs> yeah no that's the thing because like most of the replies are like well what else are we gonna talk about it's just like just nothing. Just wait for news. Go outside till the <laughs> game comes out. Yeah, it's like just Jesus. Like just, oh. and it's super. Like this mm. happens with everything. Like a game won't even be out yet, but people mm. will be like trying to get like in really early, mm. so that when the game comes out, they have like a, a foothold on like everyone else. And it happens a lot with like back when like every second week a new mobile was coming out from some company. So it was like 2012 around then. The dark times. Yeah, oh god, the mobile wars as I call them. Like, a new game would like come out and like closed alpha. Is it really a war if Dota 2 wins all of it? Well, Dota 2 and League are like the only victors. And they're still fighting. They're, but, like, they're the same game. <laughs> they're the same game. They're the same game. Yeah, they are basically. <laughs> but it's like, a game would come out in like the, like the first time it's out for the public. So like, closed alpha or like yeah, super yeah, yeah. closed beta. And like... The moment that happens, there will be, like, five different websites dedicated to, like, growing the competitive scene. Or, like, yeah, but, oh, being part of the community for this. In, like, uh, trying to be the biggest. Or, like, or YouTubers. Like, just random nobodies going, like, oh, I'm doing commentary for this game. And it's, like, I won't lie, I did the same thing hmm. for one game. Rise of Immortals. But, see, but that was sort of different. But also, like, I think that's fine as long as you don't try to become, like, the hub for the... Inf- well, like, no, that's what they do. That's exactly what it that's is. Because so dumb. It's like, you know what? <laughs> if, you know, if, if you have a channel and you make YouTube videos, if you make Let's Plays, and you yeah. get you, you get uh, access to something that's... You get access to, like, a game before yeah. it comes out, and you're allowed to post videos of it, well, you go for it. Well, there's this, there's this channel know? for Overwatch where he takes the the before mentioned like 20 minute long segments of like gameplay for a character yeah and he commentates over it like 
as if like like in like so he commentates over it sort of like explaining what happened what's happening which is fine but it's like it's in a style that it's like as if he's playing he's like discussing things like oh this is good in this area or like this ability oh, is like good for this strategy it's just no. it's like you, how do you know that like you you haven't played the game yeah okay i see what you mean and like admittedly after that a lot of these you like blizzard took a bunch of these youtubers and let them play the game because obviously they were like you guys are so fucking stupid they're like, they're like, why <laughs> but like, like we can't... but they just made it worse because now all, there's all these youtubers who are like oh we got we got our hands on impression with the game let us talk about it like we're the best you know what's you know what's great okay you know what's good is what okay <laughs> you know okay this is so i'll tell you how you do this well yeah. Right. So NBA 2K16. The game that you play for some reason. No, no, no. Lot. 2K16 is the new one. Oh, you play 2K15. 2K15. I don't know why. Do you... It's so good. Dude, I look at your Steam profile and you have like 800 hours and I'm like, where the no, fuck? No, I have like, I have like 100. It's uh, not. Okay, just 100. But it's like, I Show was like, what out. the fuck? Like, since when did you play NBA? Since, since like, <laughs> for a long time. I've been playing NBA since, I got my, f- since I got my Xbox 3, a long time. Jesus Christ, man. Like, I just fucking love, I love basketball games. <laughs> I mean, that's like, like, it's like a guilty pleasure of gaming. It's not like, even that. It's just, I didn't, how did you not know about that? Like, my guilty pleasure is I've played every single Professor Layton game on the DS. It's not really a guilty pleasure. It's DS. People are fine with that. That's like I've played, trendy. I've played all stuff. of them. They're all that's 16. That's like quaint. Playing, like playing, quaint. playing DS games is quaint, okay? <laughs> it's not even like a fucking dirty scene. That's like, oh, what, what's your guilty pleasure? And you're like, I have a glass of red wine on Friday. It's like, no. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. They're like, oh, David, what's your guilty yep. pleasure? I'm like, I dress up in a dog suit and masturbate to German <laughs> porn. Like, your thing is way less bad. Yeah, that's true. You know, and it's way more acceptable. Yeah. Um, but, the, so the new game is coming out. And they're, yeah. not, they're not vastly different, but well, they... No, it's, it's a sports game, let's be honest. Yeah. I mean, it's not like the rules of sport change. The, the only, the biggest jump was from 14 to 15, when they completely remade the engine. Oh, that's good. And it was just, it was like, so, like, the difference was night and day. Yeah. Um, this one is, like, building on everything that, because the 15 was more like a tech demo for that engine. Yeah. So it, it all worked and stuff, but there were a lot of stuff that they needed to improve. So then you, this is, like, this is, like, the, uh, this is the Halo 3 I mean, at least you don't, NBA. at least you don't play FIFA. No. Yeah. Um, I think we can agree that would no. be bad. I, P- there are, like, FIFA YouTubers, we, and all they do is, like, open those, like, cases that have the players in them. And freak out when something like I didn't even understand it. I watch those videos; they're so weird. It's it's, it's, a, it's part of the internet. I will never understand. Oh god! But um, but so they they have a new game coming out. Um, and one of the YouTubers that I watch, B Double O, has had one of the one of the most successful NBA series on YouTube that he did. Yeah. Where he basically like he played through the career mode, where you ha- you have a person. It's like in any sports game; you can create your own yeah. character and play through a team or whatever. Um, but he did sort of. Um, he played through and he edited it really well and like he just it was a really well produced series and he did he went for like almost seven months with an episode every like weekday or something yeah and it was really really well made and um it sort of the that started like the nba guys were like oh we really like the guys who make the game um 2k were like this is a really good relationship with this guy we should we should have him come in and play our new game and so they basically had him go to their studio and he played their new game and mm. they gave him a bunch of what they did was they had him go and play the game then they were like here is some footage from the, like here is some pre-release footage some selective footage you can put on your yeah. channel and then you can talk about and so what he did was he so he was like I went and played but this isn't me playing and then he like went through and just like in slow motion or like using like a like you would like an IGN yeah. rewind whatever went through like the 20 minutes of footage and just talked about like the footage but it wasn't wanky, and he was just like, "Oh, this is what the game is." Yeah, it's a well, because like, yeah, because with Overwatch, like, a game's not out. B, this is footage that like wasn't from like it's like this was like before people like people from the public had played it as well, like so anyone just, from the public. It's just so like, it's, just, it's just like the def- it's just like the first footage, and someone's like, "Yeah, that's so dumb." But the thing is, it's super popular. He's like the biggest like youtuber for a game that isn't even out, it and fucking, it's like because people are stupid, and it's not like he was known before this, like. I, th- I think it's like his content before it was just like general let's play and what mm. bullshit but it's yeah. like just stop it's oh it just kills me so much and it's, it's a... like people eat this shit up yeah people love it it's because they're so excited for stuff they don't really care whether or not the information's accurate i think i fucking hate hype trains it's what what i think is great though is that people really <laughs> like it they really like if information is wrong and you tell them otherwise and they get fucking angry at you, <laughs> like like being told I, this is this hadn't happened before till um till Dark Souls three, and I have a really long running Dark Souls two series. Yeah, it's like two hundred and forty videos Fuck or me. something. Like a lot. a lot. I should start watching it. Um, it's I'm probably never gonna play Dark Souls. There's 3. a lot. 
to go through. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but and then I had like my Dark Souls one playthrough, which is like a hundred videos. Yeah. So it's like a series. It's like the main thing on my channel. Yeah. Um, and so we did a trailer breakdown. Me and this guy. So the guy that taught me how to play the game, and who yells at me a lot during my commentaries. <laughs> we went through and we did an, We we looked at the trailer for the the gameplay for Dark Souls three, comparing it to Bloodborne and Dark Souls because it's a mix of both engines. Yeah. So. Never before in my entire life have <laughs> I been accused of lying about things which I know are just factually true. Like, <laughs> things which in my reality are the case. Yep. Like, not even arguable. So, so we were talking about the fact that... Maybe um, he's in a different Berenstein I, Yeah, I was, like, I was like, what is this? So we did this video and it was just like, whatever. Like, it was fine. Yeah. Um, it, it was probably one of the more viewed videos that we had in a while. So it was like 400 or 500 views, which yeah. isn't that much. We're a pretty small channel. But, <laughs> like... I, these, these, these people were like commenting who who we'd never seen before, which yeah. is the first. That's a bad sign to start with. Oh yeah, because we have regular viewers, and these were just um, random people. Yeah. Um, and we we made a comment about uh, they've changed the backstab mechanic a little bit. So um, in Dark Souls, one of the biggest um, so there's like two primary parts of combat that aren't part of like the main that aren't part of like the main interaction. So yeah. they they create new animations that are outside of the regular combat, so you can't be hit during those animations. So oh, they call okay. them invincibility frames. Yeah. So, like, um, there's a backstab and a parry, and so we were talking about how they changed the backstab mechanic, because watch it, like, they had about three or four in the gameplay, and we were comparing them, like, side by side to the backstab mechanic in Bloodborne and Dark Souls. Yeah. And then Dark Souls 2. And this guy was like, why are you lying about the backstab? <laughs> they wouldn't change it. And like I was they, like... They could. I was like... No, they. Did. I was like, I was like, no, they did. Like, it's not even. He was like, they didn't change it. Why would they do that? You can't prove that. And I was like, oh, I just, I like, I get comments like that. I just ignore them. Just, I just don't even look yeah, at them. But I was talking to John, who's the guy, and he was like, I was like, no, we like, that's not. It's that, in the vid. Yeah, we what? explained it. Like, it's not even. It's not even that we explained it. We showed they're next to each other. There's no. Mm. You can't be like, well, I see how they changed it, but it's a but lie. It's, yeah. <laughs> like what? And it was so. I was like, I've never been accused of lying about something that is just like a. It's just a factual. Like it's just factually true. Yeah. There's no like. It wasn't. We were like, oh, we think it's changed, and we, you know, we just feel like it has. <laughs> it was like we had two pieces, and we were like, this one's different from that one. Yeah. So it's and he was changed. like, That's no, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. But so bizarre. People just get. They get the weirdest I, like attitudes. I wait. I made a video a while back on. Uh, hi, cat. He, He's back. He's back. On a... When I used to play Dirty Bomb. Mm. And it was a... Uh, oh my god. Yeah, chill. He would... It was... <laughs> I'm so... I'm completely lost. This cat's just... Anyway, I'll stop typing the cat. Uh, <laughs> you I, get upset that you don't I sort of, like, figured out this... Like, I wouldn't say it's, like, an advanced technique. But, like, a trick in Dirty Bomb to sort of, like, bounce around the map like an idiot. And I, I made a video and I called it bunny hopping in Dirty Bomb. Because that's essentially what it was. It was just jumping repeatedly. Mm. And, but you would like, you'd have to like jump twice and then jump off a wall to like r reset the number of jumps you, cause like they would like after two jumps, if mm. you tried to jump again, you'd lose your speed. But I figured out if you do a wall jump in between the jumps, it resets. Ah. I'm like, wow, that's cool. I'm going to put this on YouTube. Yeah. Like this is actually really kind of awesome. People might want to know about yeah, it. Yeah. So I put it on YouTube. And I'm like, yeah, this is like, it's, it's a way to sort of consistently bunny hop and dirty bomb. You just have to put a wall jump into it. And yep. people lost their shit because they were like, this isn't bunny hopping. You don't gain any speed. It's not bunny hopping. Uh, bunny hopping. And I'm like, what? Why does it matter? I'm like, I was like, I was like, okay. Uh. Like, <laughs> like, I'm like, all right. So like bunny hopping isn't, bunny hopping is just when you jump like a bunny. Repeat it. Like that's the name. But like people were like, no, bunny hopping is only when you gain speed. Because, like... I thought that was a, and that's I'm like, a different thing, isn't it? I thought I'm like, that was something else. Well, like, because most, like... Because, <clears throat> like, in Quake, you you bunny hop, but then you circle, like, strafe jump, which mm -hmm. is bunny hopping a certain way to gain speed. Okay. <clears throat> but then in, like, Counter-Strike Go, which is, like, currently the biggest first-person shooter, like, multiplayer first-person shooter, it's, like... Arguably one of the biggest competitive ones ever. Oh, at the moment, yeah, definitely. It's, like bunny hopping in that game it's like a it sort of doesn't work but b it's like in csgo it's like bunny hopping if you do it badly you lose speed but if you do it properly you gain a little bit of speed so it's like most people associate just like bunny hopping with gaining speed yeah and it's like no <laughs> oh because they got one they've, they've drawn from a dark source of one yeah and i'm like i'm like okay there is no way to gain speed and dirty bomb through bunny hopping 
therefore this mechanic where you jump repeatedly which is only useful for just like dodging bullets essentially and just throwing off people's aim like i would go into pub games and just bounce around the map and just people would just be like stop fucking jumping <laughs> it's like no i ain't i'm bunny hopping it's a, like, I'm, a, I'm a free man so like I, I won't because i put it on reddit and like i got a decent amount of views because it was, it was a pretty clickbaity title because it was like here's how you bunny hop and daddy bomb and just like just the reception was like so bad like some people were like wow this is cool and i'm like good yay like that is why like I'm- most people ignored like the content of the video just because i called it bunny hopping and i'm like even if it's not called bunny hopping do you not realize like this is actually kind of something that you can use it's it's a thing you didn't know before you i then went on to later real figure out a way to gain speed while bunny hopping and i didn't tell anyone so I'm like, fuck you guys. You guys fuck don't you deserve guys. this. <laughs> I think, okay, so that, I'm I mean, take, and I'm taking the technique with me to the grave. I think like a lot of game devs kind of do that. <clears throat> like they'll get to the point where they're like, you know what? Just fuck me. <laughs> like, and I get it. Like I used to always be like, oh man, like such assholes. Like they're making all this money and they can't. Even... <laughs> but it's like you get to a point where you just you're like, could could you shut up? Yeah. Could you just <laughs> enjoy? Like, <laughs> here's some content. If you don't like it, cool. If you do, enjoy. Yeah. Otherwise fucking chill like people just i think we need a thing where like you can't post on the internet unless you can prove you know what you're talking about like but then no one would post on the oh internet oh my god that might fix a lot of problems oh god the comment section might be bearable on fucking youtube no that's probably not though no never it's never gonna happen it'll never be good um, it's sometimes it's okay like it depends what you're watching depends on the person like depends I, on the... it depends on the demographic of the channel yeah mostly. pretty much like funhouse is fine because it's like, like it's a much older audience. You scroll down on like any sort of big let's player that doesn't have like a sort of half reasonable audience, and it's just like <sighs> so like any basically any anyone like, that caters for young males. Yeah, so any like Minecraft YouTuber. Yep. Know who I hate? Who? The Diamond Minecart. I don't know who that is. He's. I keep seeing him on my fucking. Is he YouTube just really thing. popular? He's this like British fucking like 20 year old oh has he just popped up recently or something yeah he's just like a minecraft and he like he does like mod reviews and he has this annoying fucking voice and he has one of those intros where it's just like i want you to die you know what shits me like his intro is just like hi welcome to i'm just like oh my god you sound like frank water walker from national tiles frank walker from national (laughs) tiles today we're gonna be reviewing that's like literally what he sounds like i'm like oh my god i gotta do to take the tower to put on the block I mean, National Tiles. It's not like he's ever going to listen to this, but if he does, <laughs> I think you're a fucking wanker. No, see, here's the stop. thing, right? Here's the thing. I don't have. I, I'm like, you know what? If you if you can if you're producing content and it's your job, good. Like I'm, you know what? Good. Yeah. I'm, like I'm I'm happy for you. You keep doing that. That is fine. Stop ruining it for everyone. <laughs> okay, so, like, uh, the fucking okay. If you're 16 and you're on the internet and you're watching YouTube, well, say say. Say you're you're on you're on YouTube and you watch YouTube videos. Yeah, right. Which I do a lot. Which we spend don't a lot of my time. Our demographic YouTube is videos. much older, so we get like yeah. a lot of we get a lot of like thirty to thirty five. Well, mostly. hello, thirty to thirty five year olds. Yeah, right. You're all really old. Yeah. Um. So like, if you're sixteen and you're watching YouTube, so this isn't gonna be anyone. This is probably gonna be very few people listening. But yeah. Um. Like, you have to realize that. You can't just post whatever the fuck... Okay. <laughs> Let's just... For a minute, we'll just take a step back from hype for a second. Yeah. Um, freedom of speech doesn't mean you can say whatever the fuck you want. It means you have the right to say things that people are telling you not to say. It doesn't mean that you should just <laughs> say whatever comes into your head and put it on the fucking internet. Well, you can, but don't... If someone calls you out for being an idiot, then don't... Don't, like, then reference, well, freedom of speech. Cop it. Like, no. Fucking co- it's not what freedom... Freedom of speech is a legal defense. It's yeah. not an excuse for being a cunt. Yeah, pretty much. Um, same thing with, actually, same thing with fair use. Um, oh, fair use is so weird. So, well, no, it's actually really not. It's a legal defense. So, don't be, <coughs> don't be a YouTuber and put a piece of content up and get it struck for fair use. And then put up a video, so you get it struck because it's using copyright material. Don't then put up a video complaining that the piece of content you put up initially was fair use. That's not what fair use means. Fair use is literally a legal defense. Like, it's not... You can't be like, oh, well, it was fair use. It's like, no. Fair use is something that that company has to consider before they can call that strike. You can argue with that company that you were using it under fair use. Oh, but, yeah. But you can't be like... It's not just like a barrier. You can't just use it as an excuse to post other people's content. <laughs> like, I just... Oh, that shits me so much. People yeah. don't understand what fair use means. So, like, 
A good example is that um, there's a case in the courts at the moment um, where basically this video from like fucking years ago of a baby dancing with a Prince song in the background. Okay, that, so like some random viral video. Yeah, that was super popular and still has gajillions yeah. of views. Got taken down because it had Prince in the background. Prince got... So, oh my god. I, I can't think of who owns Prince, it's, but it's... That's just free marketing though. Yeah, well... That, that. It's not like if you, it's no. not like you would like. I'm going to listen to Prince for free. I'm no, going to go to this exactly fucking it. dancing no baby video. No one's doing that. Like, yeah, <laughs> like it just is in the. It's not. They're not like. I wouldn't be like. Oh man, I really want to pirate me some Prince. Let's go listen it's, to it on this channel. Yeah. Whereas if someone has posted like a Nicki Minaj song with like with lyrics on YouTube, that should be that shit should be struck. Yeah. That's her music. That's yeah. fucking. That's if something's incorrect. just like ripped completely and just oh, re-uploaded. I hate that. They're like that's, that's I flag that shit immediately. Like that's copyright infringement. But it's like, if there is like your own, if there is like any sort of like of your own content that isn't just like adding the lyrics on mm. Windows Movie Maker over the top, then it's like it's you've you've stolen. But people well, like, people like fair use its education to teach the lyrics. It's like shut up, no. <laughs> shut up, <laughs> fuck off. That's so oh, dumb. Shit, man. Because <laughs> um, I hate that. Because I support a lot of musicians who like. Because I I really want I want people that I like to succeed. So oh, shit. If, that's fine. I'm sure <laughs> yeah. that's fine. Yeah, Is well, your mic stand touching the table? No. Then it's probably fine. That's good. Um, but I want people that st- people whose stuff I like. I want them to succeed because I want them to keep making stuff. Yeah. So I'm not going to steal their stuff because they need my money to succeed. Yeah. So people that are like, oh, well, I like I posted I posted that cuz it, like it's education cuz I'm a fan. <laughs> it's like, well, what? you're like you're harming that creator by doing yeah. that. I don't think people That's think stupid. I think the other problem is there's so many kids on the internet who have never spent any amount of time building anything with their, with their life. And not to yeah. be like, oh, you're a kid, you don't know anything. It's not that. But like Well, they don't. Think about I mean, like you're correct. No, I know. They are a kid. They but I'm, I'm, not, I'm not like, oh, you're a kid, you don't know anything. Because you probably know lots of stuff. But, like, until you've spent four years building a project, yeah. think about the Arkham Knight guys. They spent four years of their lives building that game. And, and, because, like, it's com- shit. and because a company they outsourced the PC port to, yeah. people were telling them to kill themselves. Yeah, it's fucking stupid. That's, like, four years of your life. Could yeah. you, like, if you're 16, four years of your life, you're 20. That's a long time for you. Yeah. Could you imagine if you did something for that long and then after it, someone told you to kill yourself for doing it? Actually, I, s- I read this article on uh, the game dev subreddit about this guy who spent like 11 months making a game. Yeah. And he's like, he he put like so much effort into it. Like the game's actually pretty good. Yeah. And like he pretty much, he like sort of started with this really kind of cool idea. He like got a framework for it. He ended up like, rewriting the framework from scratch and like writing half the documentation because it was in a different language yeah. so like he did a lot in this process and the game like the game came out it's actually like a cool game and then it's just like he got four downloads on this mobile game like that's it yeah he's just like so he, he posted it. he was like yeah i i worked for 11 months for four downloads yep and it's like oh because and you look at it and you're like i mean the game is fun but it's like it's not 11 months fun it's like someone could yeah. throw that together, but like, and the idea of just like you can work for so long for something and, and then just nothing away. happens. But I think, I think the under- I think the thing, the difference between so every content, so unless you get extremely lucky, so unless you pull a pewds, yeah, so or I think a flappy Pew- bird. I think PewDiePie is a great example of someone who didn't work very hard initially, got lucky, and now works really hard. Well, he ma- he sort of gamed this, the YouTube system without realizing it. Oh yeah, we talked about his, we talked about this before. Yeah, because of his move from Sweden with, with to the, the US, move, yeah. like so, it just blew up. Yeah, he he kind of cheated the system by accident. Yeah, but that's fine. Like that's that's like whatever. I mean, he's done the good things from it. Look, I don't. You know, more power to the guy who who <laughs> yeah. does like he he earns so much money doing something he enjoys. Yeah. If, like, I just think that's a great thing, and I don't like him personally. I yeah. I actually really I think his content is. I don't like, mind him as a person. I hate his content. I don't like his content. He seems like a nice guy. Yeah. But he makes shit. He's done. He's done a lot of really good, uh, like, conference talks about just like what YouTube is yeah. at the moment. And I because think... like a lot of like advertisers and like sort of like corporate higher ups don't really understand YouTube as like a media. Well, it's device. kind of. I think because it is very it's... odd. And it keeps changing. Yeah. That's the other thing. Like this this decision that we're gonna see from this court case about this particular prince song yeah basically um what happened was um the the court went you know what it's actually you, just a like, video of a baby well they dancing. were like they were like it's yours i can't 
I can't put my finger on who owns the song. I was was reading about it this morning. It was like I can't remember. Fox or something. No, or like it's, it's someone like Disney or someone like that. It's like, like a it's like a weird. It was someone not someone that you think, but it, yeah. whoever it was. Um, this particular the court was like, well, the only like you should have considered before before you called the strike, you have to consider whether or not it's fair use. <laughs> Yep. And you've clearly not done that because yeah. it's not like it's not trying to deliver that piece of content on your behalf. That's yep. actually like not the main the main part of the video is the baby dancing. Yeah. It's not the Prince song. The Prince yeah. song is like a secondary it's it's auxiliary. It's not like they didn't that they they didn't play an entire Prince song and have a baby dance to the whole thing. No, they played There's just, just a like bit a, of it in the background. Yeah, so there's like well. a twenty second video sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. Um so they were like you've like you need to consider that before you strike it so i think we might we may see a change in the way the automated system works where there may have to be more consideration from companies or we'll see the opposite where they can now argue that they've done the due consideration beforehand and they can just strike whatever they want oh, i mean the, the striking system is really fucking weird at the moment on youtube i mean i think it needs to be there but i don't think i don't think it's doing its job because it needs to be there of... for certain things like just taking a video flipping the image and re like like fucking like family guy episodes and shit like that just get rid of those they're it, dumb it needs to be there for tv shows that it needs it needs to be there for content that you should pay for that you're getting for free yeah so i have the philosophy that if you can get content and pay for it you should do that because if you enjoy something you should want to support the people making it right yeah. but if say say we had a piece of paid content um which we will eventually. I'm sure we'll have stuff that you yeah. have to pay to get access to eventually. But like, if we have that, um, and you don't have access to it in your company, in your country, sorry, to get that material at all, you could pirate it. Because I want you to yeah. like, if you want to, if you like our stuff, go and fucking download it yeah, illegally. Just get it. Because yeah. I'd much rather you have it than not have access to it. Yeah. But if you have the ability to pay for it, it'd be good if you could. Yeah. Because there's time. Like people don't, people who aren't creative, professionally, or people who haven't done it for a long time. Since like, there's a lot of a lot of people. Say you're an accountant or something, you may not have like done anything particularly creative since you're in high school or something. Yeah. And you're 35, and you're like, I'll just pirate it, fucking whatever. Yeah. You forget like how much time and energy and like how draining it is to make stuff that's creative. Yeah. So I think like that understanding is something that we need to work on as a culture, to get people to be like, because you don't want to have fucking pay gates everywhere. Oh yeah, no. Like it's... I want to, I want to just be able to pay for my Netflix and watch my TV shows. Yeah. But. There's stuff that isn't on Netflix, and that I have to like. I have well, there's stuff that isn't on Netflix Australia, which is fucking stupid. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a whole. Th that's that's for a whole. That's a whole different issue because there's there's so many. The copyright is so weird and complicated yeah. in Australia, and Foxtel have been sitting on. I should say Telstra because they. Yeah. Um, they own Foxtel, but they've been sitting on the copyright for a bunch of TV shows for years. They just that they never to, use yeah. and they never post and they never show. I mean, but I, they just don't want anyone else to have it. Until yeah, until there's a decent service in Australia, people are going to keep pirating. Yeah. So, like, like if Game of Thrones was on Netflix, I would happily watch it. But yeah. I can't get it anywhere, so I just don't watch it. Yeah. And I would love to. I, I just don't watch TV in general. <laughs> um, the only thing I watch... I watch whatever's on Netflix that is, like, I'm interested in. Yeah. I Actually, I watch a lot of Netflix exclusive stuff, because I really like... Oh, God, BoJack Horseman is my life. Oh, oh, I'm in the middle of season two. Dude, how fucking hard is it? It's so sad. It gets worse. Just, <laughs> that's one of the best. There's, if you've, if you've not watched it, you know. There's an episode towards the end of that season, which is just the worst episode there's, ever. There's... It's it continues. It's one of the f it's funny, but it's one of the most heartbreaking things. The you can first ever season is like funny and weird. You're like, huh, this is kind of odd. And then the second season is just well, no. The, the first season is funny, but like it, you you go from laughing to getting your heart ripped out. Yeah, but like the second season's like compared to the second season, the first season is just like a fucking comedy show. I don't think so. I thought the oh, first season so far. I haven't finished you, season two. You haven't finished so, season two. <laughs> but so far, so far, I've been. It feels like I've been waiting for the finishing drop. season two. Puts like the whole rest of the season into sort of perspective. I thought the just like oh. first, the first episode of season two was so sad. Like oh, I want, um, it's when he's just started at the film set. Oh yeah. Um, and he's he's stopped drinking. What and he's got a new attitude. Looking at? Oh god, I hate um, that. Yeah. He's got a new attitude. Um, and it's depressing, man. And like the minute the episode started, I was like, oh no. Yeah, it's like, like oh, I immediately was like, god. I know what's gonna happen. Yep. This is gonna be terrible. Crash and burn. Um, yep. and there's a moment where um, there's a particular moment where he finds out that the way that he's living his life doesn't allow him to do something else. And it's his dream. It stops him from doing his dream. Oh yeah. And there's this moment where it's like. The writers just like gather you up into a little ball and oh, they just God, fucking yeah. cross yeah. you, and you're like. Uh, and that episode ended, and I just sat there. I was like, "What are you doing here?" Like that line is like, um, 
the what are you doing here line is like yeah because the, the... there's a bit of dead air after that where they don't play music and there's no yeah. and, and then they the do, ending credits they, yeah, yeah they leave you, you sitting on it there's about there's like three <laughs> seconds of you're watching the scene and then it cuts yeah. to black and i was like that's like the whole season <laughs> oh, it's just that show is so it's, amazing it's so good on it like it's probably it's probably one of the best written things i've ever seen oh, definitely, or experienced yeah. like it's up there anyway back to hype um, well that's hype for that well, um, i mean season three is next year for yeah they got they got rolled for another season yeah. which is great um that's one of those shows that i think will just keep they'll, they'll go from strength to strength i should think yeah five um, seasons easily oh like the writers could do that in a heartbeat yeah um something they do really well actually is they get you excited for stuff but they give you like there's like a reflex the reflexive nature of that show is they get you excited for something, but they let you know that it's gonna be awful. Yeah. So they're like, this great thing is gonna happen, and then they're like, yeah, but nothing good ever happens. You, yeah, you you know, just everything's gonna go it's to like, shit. It's it's way too much like real life. Oh god, yeah. If they want, so just if they like... want animals, it would be the saddest fucking thing ever. No, I'm glad they are animals. No, that's what I'm saying. If they weren't animals, it would be the saddest show in the world. Oh. Uh, it would be unwatchable. That's I how I don't think it would be is. as good if they were animals, because because the animals kind of bring in sort of the uh. Like the disconnect. No, that's and what I mean. If it was, if it, if it didn't well, have the but animals, it, is that, it would it's, be unwatchable. It's that disconnect which makes you sort of because, like, if they're just people and it's just like, and you just like watch, it, you'd be like, it's just sad people. It'd just be like. No, that's that's what I'm saying. Yeah, but because it's animals, it's like because there's that disconnect. You're like, oh, it's just a show about animals, and you realize, holy shit, this is basically real life, but they're animals. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what I was saying. Almost what it's like. It's it's cognitive dis dis a dis a wank dissonance. dissonance. Yeah. Um, well, it's more like cognitive reflexivity. I don't know what that is. So it's basically <laughs> okay. So you know when uh, okay, it's kind of like it's it's like dissonance. But what they do is they fucking turkey outside. They produce the dissonance, um, and you're like, oh, there's there's this horse that's acting like a person. Yeah. But then what they'll do is they'll have a person act like an animal. Oh yeah, true. I forget there are humans and yeah. It's, there's, yeah. There's, there's like we we're trying to work it out. Yeah. There's no reason why anyone's anything. Yeah. And they're also just fucking animals. Also, well. there's a, there's a few moments where it's just like, in one of the later episodes, have you met Wanda yet? I don't. What is what what character is Wanda? She's the she's, owl. She's right? the owl. Yes. Yeah. So this is one scene where they're talking and like, this isn't a spoiler, but like she, t- she's like behind someone, but like. And she like sort of cuts. Oh, her in head! Fr- is her head going on the thing? No, no, no. She like cuts in front of someone, but instead of like walking around, she like f- just quickly flies over them. And you're like, oh, she's an owl. Yeah, she yeah. can fly. I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> there was a scene in an earlier episode where her, her head turns all the way. Yeah, back, yeah. And I was like, oh, she's an owl. Yeah, it's like, oh <laughs> like, yeah, she's an owl. Like stuff like that. I think it's is really just, funny. yeah, stuff like that's really um, funny. Yeah, I think that idea of like combining something that's really funny with something that's really sad oh, it's hard, works it's hard. so well for yeah. them, and it. Like, uh, so the guy that I live with, Liam, um, we, we've been watching, so, like, we watched the first season in, like, one hit. Oh, yeah, I watched them all in one hit. Um, and, and so we, so we, we started in the morning, and we started drinking at, like, 9am and watching it at night. <laughs> and we got to the, like, we went through, like, two cases of beer. Oh, the God, whole yeah, that's horrible. Um, no, it was fine. It's, I, 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 don't, I don't think I could, dr- I'd, I'd lose my shit if I've, I drank and watched it. I have an outrageously high alcohol tolerance, so it was oh, fine. Yeah, fair enough, but, yeah. like, it was just, the experience of going, like, w- w- like, experiencing that kind of writing, if if every piece of content I experienced was half as good as that, I would never want to go into <laughs> Like, I would never want to talk to anyone. Yeah. I would just be engrossed. I saw um, American Ultra on the weekend. Oh, is that the one with the uh, Jesse Eisenberg? Eisenberg is it good? Uh, I mean, it's so cliche, but it's like... Well, it's uh, it's, it's uh, him and Stuart, right? Chris yeah, Kirsten Stewart. Stewart. They're a great team together. They've always been they're, good they're actually They're really good in the movie. Oh, they've always been great. She does, she's, she's pretty good. Because they, like, they were Adventureland, weren't they? Uh, what? Adventure. That was the first film they. They've been in so many films together. I don't know. But they were in Adventureland, which was one of their best ones. Yeah, American Ultra. It's kind of cliche. There are a few plot holes that you sort of realize, like after you're like, wait a minute. Isn't it just like a silly action film? Uh, funny? yeah, it is. Like, it is funny. Because the premise is that the... he's like a sleeper agent. <laughs> yeah. But he's also like a he's stoner. He's like a fucking huge stoner. Yeah. Yeah. Which is a great idea for a film. Yeah, I mean, he he plays the he, but he's like super um, he's still like super awkward. Because it's Jesse Eisenberg. Because he's, he's Jesse Eisenberg. He's like, he's like yeah. the Michael Sarah version of Jesse Eisenberg. What? So he's, he's like the Michael Sarah oh, version yeah. of Jesse Eisenberg. Yeah, yeah, I know. Because yeah. Jesse Eisenberg has like. He can be serious, yeah. Yeah, because I'm sure when he's like Sleuther, that'll be really creepy. <clears throat> oh, yeah, that's, that's going to be weird. Him in that trailer, something about him is so creepy. Yeah, it's and odd. The, he, the way that he reads, I was like, mm. Ugh. like, I just feel uncomfortable. Yeah, like American Ultra is good. The comedy is okay. So they're just like. It's probably funny if you're a stoner. 
like a massive oh uh, i mean there are parts of it where it's just like that's just like so just like typical stoner kind of thing like he has a uh he has like a bunch of characters that he draws in like comic strips called um apollo ape which is just like a space monkey yep and it's like i was watching i was just like yep that's that's stoner life we have a bunch of yep. monkey fucking cartoons it's like, like like literally something you pretend will be a career one day that you've never wanted yeah that's yeah. literally exactly what yeah. it is <laughs> it's like yo yep. <laughs> yeah no I was, I was like immediately i was like oh i know someone like yeah that. it's yeah. and like from that like it's from that perspective it's a, it's a decent movie but like i mean it wasn't overly amazing i mean but you weren't expecting no much, though, i just so. went and was just like yeah it's good i, mean, I think, it wasn't I think that, or that attitude you always enjoy stuff more i mean yeah i had the same feeling when i saw uh, the man from uncle because i hadn't seen oh, that the was original. superman right henry yeah Cam- so i hadn't Cam- i hadn't seen the original tv series but i want to now but it was ah. like, i just went in expecting nothing and i left and i was just like yeah it's right. just like a fun James Bondy kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, but like it's a little bit al- funnier. This has always been fun. Yeah. Like it's kind of um it's almost like a parody of James Bond in a lot of ways. Yeah, there are parts not of as much, Not as much as much as like Kingsman. I didn't see Kingsman, but apparently I hated, that I was No, I hated Kingsman. Okay, cuz I, I never Kingsman saw it cuz it just didn't appeal to me. Uh like Kingsman appealed to like a bunch of fucking like fangirls. It was like the it's like the Twilight version of uh like James Bond, I guess. Uh, okay. But like, I didn't like it. I thought it was super cliche and kind of sexist in a lot of ways. There were a lot of just dumb plot holes where it's like, why? Yeah, clearly someone was like, oh, we have to have this scene. That's like, the only reason. The, for the like, he doesn't even... I'm going to spoil it because I don't give a fuck. So he doesn't even become the Kingsman. A female character does. Mm. And, like, sh- it's it's sort of, like, shown that she has a fear of heights. So, like, that's established. She has a fear of heights. But she still makes it because he's too much of a pussy to shoot a dog. Which is sort of explained. Okay. The gun had blanks in it, it's so they didn't I take your word for it. Anyway, it's fine. but like the the <laughs> finale. So to so me. the finale is is that like it turns out that like the leader of Kingsman is actually evil. So like they sort of create like a rogue group of like the the dude. So Etsy, like the sort of like mentor of him who's left with him. Yeah. Like the mentor character, and then the female character who's like the love interest, but not really. And, like, there's, like, two roles. There's, like, one person has to, like, sneak in to a goddamn, like, like, fucking fortified facility where all the evil people are. And the other person has to go up in a weather balloon to, like, stop a missile from being fired, like, in the stratosphere. Just, like, every action film ever. Okay, so so the female (laughs) character, who is a Kingsman, she is the spy. She has a fear of heights. They put her in the weather balloon. And that they doesn't send, make any fucking sense. And they send the guy who isn't a Kingsman to do the spy thing. And I'm like, why? Literally do the opposite of that. I'm like, I'm like what the fuck? That just sounds like such a rookie it's mistake just, in writing. I was so annoyed. Like every, I walked out someone, of the room and I'm like, that was fucking Someone stupid. in focus testing should have been like, oh, it's like, is it a bad idea? Yeah. <laughs> like one of the writers should have been like, guys, this but is like, bad everyone idea? loves it for some reason. I'm like, and people, then there's and, like and there's this joke where there's this Danish princess, mm. literally Danish princess, who's been captured, mm. and like obviously he's like, oh, I'll come save you. Yeah. And she there's this one joke which is like it go it started off okay it was funny but then they just like threw it into the ground. He's like, he like finds her in the cell but he has to do his other things so he's like. So he's like, if I so he's like trying to be smooth. He's like, oh, if I come back to you, do I get a kiss? Mm-hmm. And she's like, I'll give you more than a kiss. Ew. And you're like, okay, that's funny. Whatever, that's a joke. Like, ha! Just end it there. <laughs> but like, then ha! he, but Hand then job. he's like, then he's just like, he does like some dumb smirk, and he's like, oh, oh, really? And she's just like, oh yeah, we can do butt stuff. And I'm like, what? like that's literally the line. That's not funny. Uh, exactly. I'm like, w- wow, that's okay. not funny anymore. <laughs> See, that's not good comedy writing. <laughs> that went from like actually a decent no, you joke know the problem to with like that. butt stuff is funny the problem with that joke is that there's like two jokes in there and and like no the, well the problem is a misunderstanding uh, of comedic structure it's just yeah somebody exactly. somebody somebody has not studied comedic structure it was like it was like lead up punchline then the second lead up and the second punchline so that's can, not as funny you can do lead up punchline 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 that's fine if you get it right yeah so like if you ever watch so a great person a great example of this is like will anderson i don't know if you watch much of his stand-up no but he's got really his the reason he's so funny is that he's got perfect comedic structure. Yeah. Because he's written so... Like, he's one of those people that just has worked at it for years. Yeah. And so, like, he'll tell a joke. There will be a punchline. And then... You have the you comedic timing. That. and You can have a second punchline Yeah, and you after. have a throwaway punchline afterwards that people laugh at. And then he'll do... Then sometimes he'll have a third one 
where he recontextualizes the joke and makes it all funnier. Yeah. And you're like, that's good. That's and like stops standard cause, comedy. Yeah, because it's, com- yeah. it's a fucking theory. Like, it's, but like, you study that shit. If you're a comedic this writer... This just, like, wasn't funny. Like, there was a laugh at the first one, and, Literally, like, I laughed at the first one, and then it just kept going, and I was just like, oh, God, Literally, no, the lead stop. writer thought butt stuff was funny. Like, oh, and then the movie ends with literally butt stuff. It's not like a zoom in shot of her butt when he's like in the room. I'm like, this isn't funny at all. So it sounds like they just made it for like 15 year old guys. But like only girls, like it's no, it's made for like 15 year old girls. I guess the main they char- wanna... the main male character is like attractive, whatever. I guess they want to brainwash young women. <sighs> <laughs> Yo, I don't know horrible. what you want from me. Oh, it's just um, I, I hated that film, and I still hate it. That's fair enough. I think it's um. On that beautiful note, oh, God. Um, on that beautiful note, we'll wrap up this one. Um, we didn't talk about. Oh, we did talk about. We didn't Hyde. even get to we talk did, about we Pokemon t- Go. We talked about. Oh, we can fine. We'll do it quickly. Uh, What's tell us about? So Pokemon Go got announced, and again, like the hype train is real because it's an augmented reality Pokemon game. It's not. It's a mobile game. No, it's a. It's an augmented. It's a reality. mobile game. But but like, it's so Ingress is an augmented reality game. It's, it's a it's a mobile you're, game. You're making it sound like. It's good. It's well, no. Not... So augmented reality is just like yeah, you're I... in the real world, but then there's an extra yeah, layer on top yeah, of it. I, yeah, I know. But it's literally what. Yeah, but that's like not, it's not virtual. That's reality. not what people hear when you say augmented. Okay. No, there's virtual reality, yes. which is Oculus Rift, yes. and then there's augmented. I'm aware of that, but the, the people nah. don't hear that. All okay, they hear so it's, is it's a game where you walk around and your GPS tracks where you are, and there's Pokemon everywhere. Yeah, there you go. And you catch. Well, Pokemon. I assume you, you catch, catch Pokemon. Pokemon. You catch Pokemon. We assume you battle them with people, but like, so it's made by the guys who did Ingress. And um, why don't you explain a bit about what Ing- Ingress is? So Ingress is the, like for the people. sort of the same game. You, there's two teams, and around the world, there's these things called portals. So yeah. portals are things on like, like statues and like important buildings will have a portal on them. Yeah, which are like manually placed in the game world. And if you walk up to a portal, and you have the app on, you're like it'll track your GPS location. It'll be like there's a portal near you, and you can, you can sort of. You can attack it. You can sort of do stuff with the. You portal, interact basically. with. You that interact space, with it. Yeah. yeah, and there's there's two teams, and they're basically fighting for control over portals over the world. So there's like, like a, a worldwide big fuck you game yeah. capture the flag. There's yeah, pretty much. So there's like there's a worldwide yeah like score, but there's also like the game sort of focuses a lot on like having like your city, like you team up with people in your city, yeah, or in your local area like who people, are on your yeah. team, yeah, and you sort of try to sort of gain control of your city to sort of help the world to help your score. team yeah and you can do cool things you can do like you can connect like portals between countries and crazy shit like and there that, was that if big, you're there was a thing that you went to where there's like shit loads of yeah, people on the so city. they they have events where like the people who make the game like there's this running storyline where every week there's like extra content added to the story which yeah. is actually a really cool story and they have like events where it's just like oh there's like this big anomaly happening in yeah. these cities at this time so you go there and there are actually events organized. And there's by just the literally like hundreds of just people a, there. Yes, it's so weird. It's, it's just so a big weird. organized game. People just turn up. Yeah, it's really cool. It's it's fascinating. Yeah. So like, I they're, love it. they're basically doing a Pokemon version of it, and the trailer showed pretty much exactly what people who played Ingress would expect. You yes. Know, like sort of. But no more than that. They want. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. Like everyone's sort of looking at it and going like and like speculating beyond the trailer, and you yeah. can't do that because. If you look, if you've played Ingress, go back and look at the Ingress trailer, and you realize, oh, this trailer is exactly representative of yeah, what they're Ingress very is. careful about what they yeah. put in them. And like, if so, you take sort of that idea of the trailer is pretty much exactly the game experience, and then you look at the Pokemon trailer. It's like Pokemon don't move around; they stay in a single spot. Yeah. All you do to catch a Pokemon is throw a ball at it you and hope for RNG. Yeah. Battling is completely AI controlled because it's, it's people, bo- the because players box. aren't yeah yeah because players aren't looking at their phone during the battles, and there are events which whatever there are going to be events and that'll be a new, that'll be an entirely separate mechanic I'm yeah sure. so it's um, like so people, people people are like oh you get to take train a battle it's like there's no evidence of that yeah no yeah, there's and know. it's like there's <laughs> and the weird like free for all thing they showed in the trailer is the, like that's the most confusing the thing what? like. Well, in the trailer, there's, like, a part where it's, like, there's three three guys and, like, two girls, and there's, like, a skate park, and there's, like, oh, 20 yeah. different Pokemon all fighting together, and it's just, like, well, that's... that's sort of the one thing where it's just, like, that could sort of lead to, like, well, how does Pokemon battling work? Do you just throw your Pokemon out, yeah, it's and a it attacks box. whatever's yeah, close? Yeah, it's, it's, you put them in a box, and you <laughs> take it up, and you see who wins. That's how that mechanic will work. I can almost guarantee that's yeah. how it'll work. It's, if you have better stats, you will win. Yeah. So, it's, like, it's a that... lot of people are sort of taking it as, like, a, like, they're sort of just 
They want it. They want it to be. They want it to be more than. They want it, it to be, be a Pokemon game on a phone that uses augmented reality to let you catch catch and battle. It's not going to be yeah. what it is. It's well, not... that's what it will be. But it, that's ex- like that's exactly what it will be. Yeah, but they're gonna like. Th- There'll be more because the thing with Ingress is that it's actually a boring game. The game itself is boring. It's the social, but it's the social aspect which is fun. Yes. So the same thing will and like Pokemon Go looks like it has more social interactivity in itself with like the battling and the mm. trading. So like it'll at least be better socially. But I think the game itself, like, because they're working with Nintendo and the and the Pokemon company, they're not going to put, like, yeah, the Pokemon game Yeah, I was game saying in, this in the yeah. car. It's not going to be a mobile Pokemon game. No, because then no one would buy main why would you Pokemon buy, games. why would you buy the new Pokemon yeah. game when it comes out? Like, they've talked about how there's going to be, like, some sort of connectivity between the games. And, like, that'll probably just be, like, you catch a Pokemon and go and you can send it to your game. That's cool. Like, that's probably going to awesome. be expensive. If that's a thing, that's awesome. Yeah. Um... I guess my concern is, like, people tend to project what they... So, like, they look at that trailer and they're like, people lost their shit. Oh, my God. The internet went crazy. Like, I saw the trailer. I got really excited because I'm like, dude, Niantic making a Pokemon really? game. Like, I, was like, I, was, I was like, dude, yeah, like, sign me up because I love Ingress. I'm, like, I'm I think so... Great. I feel like at this point I'm so fucking... I was like, <laughs> eh. Like, whenever I see something, I'm like, yeah. Yeah, okay. like, when the trailer ended, I was just like, okay, that's... It's just going to be like Ingress. It's going to be kind of an average game, but the social aspect's going to be pretty good. Yeah, which is exciting because it's like yeah. a game like like Ingress for me was like I've I did more fucking walking playing Ingress than I've, like that I've like done with anything else. Like, yeah, it like... sort of gets you out, and you sort of see parts of your city that you don't really see, and like you'll meet people, and like like you'll sort of learn more things about your city and about like your local area. I think it's a good, and yeah. it's also kind of cool, like because especially with Ingress, because because there's two teams, you kind of had to keep the fact that you played the game sort of secret because you didn't want another player f- to figuring out, out who it, you yeah. are and then, like, start targeting you because that was inherently of, bad. I think that's, like, something about that is it, it sounds... It should be cheesier than it really is, but, like, the, it's that, kind of, the idea of meeting people like that is just yeah. kind of cool. But, like, Pokemon like, goes to the opposite because they have those those wrist things that you can, like, interact with. Oh, the doobie So it's, like... Yeah, what the fuck in, is that about? Oh, Do you need that to play the game? No, it's more just, like, a controller. So you can, like... Without pulling your phone out, you can do things with Pokemon. It'll, like, vibrate if there's a Pokemon nearby. You can just hit catch, and it'll do it automatically. Yeah, but I want my Apple Watch to do that. Oh, sure yeah, no, like, with the thing with Ingress is that we wanted, like, Pebble apps or, like, sort mm. of other apps that let us control the game, but they just didn't give them to I us. I feel like that's what Apple Watches were made for. Well, pretty, no, it's exactly what... Yeah. Like, if... Like, I'm hoping that those those functions aren't locked to only the Pokemon wrist thing. Anyway, but, like, that sort of object means that, like... The fact that they're wanting people to wear that means that, like, they want, like, the game is going to be, like, built in a way where it's, like, you want to be able to find other players. You don't want to sort of hide your identity as a player mm. f- to have an advantage. Like, it's better to find other people and be like, oh, you play Pokemon Go, and let's, like, let's, let's go trade. catch some yeah. Pokemon. Which is, like, cool, because, like, the thing with Ingress is that you'd meet so many players and you'd be like, oh, what team are you? And there's a 50% chance oh, that you have to hate them. There's a happy where you're like, you were like, I, I hope you're you. the also, same. can you please stop hitting your microphone? All right. Or, like, hitting the table. <laughs> you're a loud guy today. Um, you know, fair enough. Yeah, because, like, we... It was actually funny. Actually, I mean, you can keep hitting it all you want. Okay. You don't mind. No, don't. <laughs> Thanks, Ben. Yeah, it's like, the sort of... The social aspect of Ingress. Like, it's cool meeting... Like, because I, I met a bunch of people at UQ, or uni, who played. Mm. And, like, at most uni campuses were like covered in portals for ingress yeah and there was quite a big community but like that makes sense. i would meet people who were on my team and then like two weeks later they would like switch teams Ooh. and then it's just like i'm never going to see you again because we, we're, we we're can't mortal be friends. enemies we can't be friends now because, game over yeah and it's like or i stopped playing for a bit and i came before the uh before the event in brisbane and i came back and like Half the people I knew weren't only even on, like weren't on the same team anymore. I was just like, this sucks. <laughs> yeah. Where it's like, like Pokemon Go, you could leave and come back, and it's just like there's no like rivalry. Like let's there's be no teams. let's be friends. Everyone can have every Pokemon. Yeah, which I think is like inherently pretty cool. I think that's a big. I mean, that's Nintendo in a nutshell. But then the oh. hype train because oh. I I found this <laughs> oh. event on Facebook which pissed me off. Where it was like, what was the event? It was this <laughs> Facebook event where it's just like for like June for like. January 7th, 2016, next year, so, like, Age of War, it was just, like, we're revealing the Brisbane gym leader, like, for Pokemon Go, and I'm like, oh, shit, is this, like, an official thing? Yeah. No. What? It's not. It's just a bunch of videos who were like, oh, I'm gonna be the gym leader for Brisbane. What? It's just like, no, you won't. No, what, what is that? Like, what, what, are you t- what are you talking about? I'm like, well, because, like, it's if you think about it, like, they could easily, they could easily have 
people. That who would be are, the coolest thing ever. Because Ingress had. Could you be the gym leader for a city? Because Ingress had play like certain players in Ingress. It was like five of them were like actual story characters. Oh, that's awesome. And they would like they would actually have they would actually appear at certain events, and you'd be like, dude, that's that's fucking this person. That's so cool. And like they would swap. That's so cool. They would like shift teams based yeah. on like who wins events. Oh, that's so cool. So like there were like non-player characters yeah. who were real people. And like they could do that kind of thing with Pokemon Go. Like that's the that's what's possible when you sort of like if you ignore the game, just having someone who was just like, I'm the gym leader for this city and I'm act like I'm actually the official That'd be sanctioned. Badass. Like shit like that is cool. But it's like, you know, Pokemon aren't gonna run around. <laughs> no. Like someone was someone on tum- uh Tumblr was just like, Oh, people are gonna get like hit by cars chasing Pokemon no, over no, roads. I'm like, radius. no, Pokemon. We ta- not I mean we're talking about this in the car, yeah. but it's a GPS break. People yeah. don't under- people don't understand their phones. Yeah. How do you use your phone every day and not understand it? I don't get it. <laughs> the other day, someone was like, oh, why isn't my phone doing X, Y, Z? And I was like, because you're holding a computer and computers have bugs, buddy. Yeah. And he was like, he what? A buggy. I'm like, you need to restart it. It's a fucking computer. And yeah. it's like, no, it's my phone. I'm like, like shut <laughs> up. Shut up. No, it's my phone. Fuck off. <laughs> on, the, on that delightfully happy note, we'll yeah. end this episode. Um, basically, just chill. Like, yeah. Just relax. The thing that you enjoy, you're going to enjoy it a lot more if you go into it understanding that nothing is ever as good as it is in your head. Yeah, if you go into it with no expectations, everything will exceed your expectations. If you go in with an open mind and you have very locks, not locks, but you have reasonable, like it's not, I'm not going to be like, oh, well, just no, if you don't expect anything, like the things that you get will be like either shitty or like cool. It makes, it makes life really enjoyable, to be honest. Like every time something, every every time something nice happens, I'm like, that was great. I wasn't expecting that. Whereas if you're the type of motherfucker who's like, just, that was not as good as I wanted, you'll never have fun ever. And no one you'll have no one will want to spend time just, with you. Just get off the hype train at the next station. Yeah, That's or just jump off while it's moving. Yeah. <laughs> Take the collateral. Yeah. Um, but yeah, chill out um, and try and enjoy the stuff that you want to enjoy. Don't make a fucking thing out of everything. Yeah, stop um, posting threads on the <sighs> Overwatch subreddit. <Don't>, yeah. <laughs> I'm sick of that shit. Specifically, get off yeah. the Overwatch. Actually, if a game isn't out, Rather than speculate, um, what you should do is you should find other people that are excited about it, and chances are they're interested in similar things you are. Yeah. So make some do friends. Yeah. Do like, something similar. Like yeah. Or not even similar, but like if you enjoy, if you're like, I'm so excited for Fallout 4, and there's another thing that people who are excited for Fallout 4 are doing, go hang out with people that are interested in the same things as you are. Yeah. Because chances are you'll get along and you'll enjoy it. Yeah. So don't, just don't make everything a thing. Um, well, don't make anything like a single thing. Yes. Because that's like... It's, like, understand that's that the last understand that everything thing. starts and ends at some point and the more important thing is to enjoy it while it's happening not for it to live up to some magical expectation yeah, pretty much that's probably true of everything in life yeah now that i think about life it. advice with... that's pr- actually that's probably some pretty d- yeah <laughs> like don't stop comparing things to what you think they're gonna be like and focus more on what is actually happening and chances are you'll find you're a lot happier <clears throat> because mm-hmm. you'll stop focusing on what could be and you'll start enjoying what's actually happening yeah just well, have no cool. dreams or aspirations. No. <laughs> no, no, I, think, I think goals are fine but like understand yeah, that like different. like if if you want to if you want to do something with your life later on so like say you want to be in say you want to draw pictures for a living yeah like realize that drawing pictures now isn't like something you can enjoy you know it doesn't have to be like you don't have to be always focusing on where you're going sometimes you can just do something and enjoy it at the same time yeah um, and you the more present you are it sounds really fucking like is, yogury or something it's like slightly more wanky with every oh sentence oh god it's go. getting worse um it's just, just be just be present and chill the fuck out yeah if you relax you'll have a nice it. life that's yeah. all i'm saying all right um and with that bit of fucking <laughs> nugget of wisdom uh we'll see you guys next time yeah it's okay the soundtrack's amazing yeah the visuals are very like well done and like the <laughs> gameplay is super fun <laughs> and like because those three things are there it's like it's exceptionally good I could do it in a heartbeat and make millions, but it would feel like gouging my soul out. Yeah, Jurassic Park's a little more like DDR. If Shrek is afraid to a creature, can he actually own land and want to kick them off? Where did that come from? You have to make a lot of shit up to make good art. Yeah, yeah. That's, like, that's just the truth, buddy.